Thank you for joining us today. I am joined by Nick White, who is my mentor and friend. He has been a fantastic ally and support for me as I've been running our business. And I thought he would be super interesting to bring on to help you guys in your own quest to better improve yourselves. So Nick, just to get started, do you want to tell uh, the audience a little bit about yourself? Sure. I, um, I grew up in, in rural Illinois in a, in a family of uh, entrepreneurs. My dad had always had a business from, from my childhood, and my, my mom was a, um, kind of a, a great number two. She was uh, um, our office manager, his office manager, his assistant, and when they were at work, dad was the boss, and when they were at home, Dad was not the boss, <laughs> um, but you know, I had, had the, the good fortune to always have my dad wore a suit and tie to work, and I would go to meetings with him growing up, and I didn't quite understand, but I did understand that people respected my father. Mm -hmm. And when he came home, we talked about business at work, and I saw what work ethic would look like when he had to go back to the office after dinner, and um, he had a business on the side and different things. But, I grew up in, in, the, in a family business. I went off to college, came back, thought I was going to be a high school history teacher, realized uh, uh, that, that, <laughs> would, that would not have went as well. well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, I probably don't follow the rules you know, as well as a you know, history teacher should. Um, realized that wouldn't be a great occupation for me, and went into the family business. And so for uh, nine years, had the good fortune of working with both my mom and my dad. In the, in the same office, and which was uh, an interesting dynamic. Uh, it was great. Um, I learned a lot. I got to see a different side of them mm -hmm. than maybe my sisters did, who always just saw mom and dad. Yeah. And I saw mom and dad, the, the business people. But um, after nine years of being there, I, I really had this tug of, uh, my heart's always been, I've always been um, kind of haunted by the, the Schindler's List movie. and. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, I, when I saw it in high school, um, college time period, is that here's Oscar Schindler who saved a thousand people's lives. And, and if you haven't seen the movie, it's been out for 25 years, so I'm gonna ruin it if you haven't seen it because it's been out that Spoiler. long. Shame, shame on you for not seeing it yet. But and so here's a guy who saved a thousand Jews from the uh, concentration camps in World War II. And at the end, you know, he's, uh, he has to leave. He has to flee um, because of, uh, they found out about him. And he, he looks down and he can see like his lapel and this watch. And he's like, two more people, three more people. And he has this regret that he could have done more. Mm -hmm. And he could have done more. And after nine years of being in a town that I grew up in, in a very safe environment, in a, um, a good life, I also had that. Can I do more? Should I do more? And I didn't yeah. want to, when I was 80 years old, to look back and say, I didn't do enough. I can relate. <laughs> so I, I moved to Minnesota, which I thought was going to be for six to 12 months. Um, ended up 12 years later. Uh, I'm, I'm still here. And during that time period, uh, I moved up for a corporate opportunity uh, for a couple of years and built uh, a company with about 15 uh, employees, left, started a, another one. And uh, during that time, really learned a lot about entrepreneurship, about sales, about being a business owner, networking, giving, and really uh, transformed a little country bumpkin, as I always think of myself, as somebody who just fell off the turnip truck, yeah. to uh, uh, someone who's fairly yeah. decent at business and, yeah. uh, and people like that. So kind of my, my story, um, and, and it's been, a true uh, honor getting to know people, and I just find that my life is so good in being able to talk with people and hear their stories yeah. and help out in a lot of different ways. Um, and, and that's that's, that's really like what gets me out of bed is that the, the reverse of the Oscar Schindler of like I want to do enough. I want to feel that at the end of your life it's the well done, good and faithful servant. Yeah, like that's what I want to hear, not yeah. the voice of regret of you kind of mail it in, Nick. Like it was all about you, like you didn't do enough for others. I love that. 
Well, during this time, if you have any questions for Vic or for me, you can uh, post them up on, on the live forum, I guess, or post them on YouTube. And uh, one of the things that I love about Vic, firstly, is that he's a major business leader here in the Twin Cities. He's one of the best connected men that I know. And the way he did that is by having this mentality, a giver mentality, where he focused on helping out other people without expecting anything in return. Mick, do you want us to tell us just a little more about that? Yeah, you know, the, lately I've been uh, really thinking about this, this visual of building a mountain of generosity. That each time we give, you know, little by little, this, this mountain starts to form. And, and that question of, like, how big is your mountain? Mm -hmm. How much have you given? And so uh, when, when I was in a transition from a corporate position to going out and start another business that I learned, um, discovered, might be the right word, that most people in sales or when talking about their business, they say something along these lines of, uh, I'm great, my company's great, our products are great, our prices are great, and Mike, I'm really into relationships. By the way, I'm a nice guy. And I'm so nice, I go to church twice a week. Unlike your current person or company that you work with, they only go to church once a week. Not nearly as good a person as I am. You're paying way too much, and the products just aren't as good as mine. So do business with me. And by the way, um, I printed your LinkedIn contact list, and I circled five people that I'd like you to introduce me to. <laughs> and so you want to do business? And, and I think about like what part of that is the golden rule? What part of that is giving to others or doing to others as you'd like them to do to, your, to yourself? Like it's all about most people's sales presentations, all about me. Or let me tell you about how great my company is. And, and I think if, if you went on a date with if the first date you went on with your wife, and, and you had that same I'm great. You know, let me tell you about my family. Let me tell you about, you know, just I'm going to tell you my life story. And by the way, um, I made a list of, if, if things don't go real well between us, I made a list of five of your girlfriends on Facebook. If you could introduce me to those two, like, just in case, right? Like, I don't think that would work real well. that would be such nonsense, but yet we, we do things like that in business. And... And so I, I tried to flip the script in, in, a, in a contrarian sort of way. Like, what if I went out and just started making introductions? What if, and, and not really introductions, what if I just went out and started to help? Yeah. You know, what, if, what if, when we talk and I say, hey, Mike, you mentioned these things, like, there's this head talk, or this, there's, there's this somebody that you need to listen to this book, or you need to read this book, or here's, here's something that helped me and getting um, a to-do list for us. What, whatever those things are, what are five things I can do or five people I can introduce to you that can help make your life better? And uh, to the point where, it, it, it got to the point where um, I was actually trying to measure that as a metric uh, of how many, wow. how many people am I meeting on the course of a week? And then what am I doing you know, for my cadence? Did, did I introduce them to this person? Did I send them this TED talk? Did I like, what are things that I can do to help? Because most of the time, that whole, we're really in relationships, I'm just like, prove it, right? Like, I hear you, I hear what you're saying, and I trust you that you're a good person. Prove to me that you you actually care, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like, like, prove to me that it's not, just because we both have the same interests, but that's nice. But that's not why I want to do business with mm -hmm. you. Like, I want to help other people, and that give first mentality has really um, changed the relationships I have with people. It's changed the, the way I go about business, um, how I dress for work, and just a lot of um, my daily purpose in life. Was that a tough change to make, going from maybe a manager mentality to being a giver? Yeah, it, it, um, it was. And, and there's this, um, because 
it's not really my industry. Like when, when I have business coaches or consultants would come in and they'd ask me all the questions and dive into my business, and they would ask questions like, how many referrals are you getting a week? Knowing that the minute they'll say, well, the industry best practice says you should have at least 50 a week. And I'd be like, uh, well, I'm not asking for any. They're like, oh, you need to ask for them. I'm like, I don't want to ask for them. That's not who I am. That's, that's very uncomfortable and not natural. And to the point of like in 20 years, I've never done it. And they would just, they, you can just see them just like, what are you talking about? Red face. Red face. <laughs> you need to do this. And and so they just like, but the contrarian in me is, is like, but that's that's not that's not me. Like I want to be more of me. Like this this thought of like uh, the more me that I become, the better my life gets. Mm -hmm. And so so there's this this joke um, that if, if one person calls you a cowboy, you know, they're crazy. If three people call you a cowboy, um, there's a conspiracy. And if 10 people call you a cowboy, you better go buy a saddle, right? Like, if enough people tell you that. So there was even this thought of that industry and sales and all the experts are right. You should do business this way. Or they're all wrong. Like there, there, for me, there wasn't much of an in between. Mm -hmm. And so mine was like, that's not me. I'm going to go be me. And once I started doing that, and once I became more of me, that if if you don't like tattoos, I got a couple. Of them. And if you don't like them, we're okay. Like I'm not trying to be friends with everybody in the world. What I'm trying to do is be very. Um, True to myself and be very authentic to, to who I am and and who that person is. What can I do to help? What can I do to help other people? And uh, my I have a three year old son, and uh, we live uh, downtown, and there's so there's fire trucks and there's ambulances and helicopters all the time. Like it is a great place to live <laughs> if you're three. Like, there's, there's action all the time. And uh, so for a couple of years, he's always called. Um, the policeman and the fire truck and the firemen and uh, the ambulances, he always calls them woo woos because that's the sound that they make. Woo woo woo. <laughs> and so at times, though, like, instead of using the word help, we use the word woo woo. And you know, so I'm like, his name is Callister. I'm like, Callister, you know, he's like, call me a woo woo when he's helping you know, do different things. I think it's just like, just the ability to say, like, I'm going to go help as many people as I can, wherever they're at in life, makes life a whole lot easier and better rather than just always trying to qualify everybody you talk to, mm -hmm. like, oh, you're a prospect or you're not a prospect. It's the same, uh, like, oh, you don't fit or you do fit. Or, I know we just met, but we should do business. Like, I know we just met, what can I do to help? Like, where are you at? What are you going through? What can I do to help you out? At some point, though, are you, do enough people need your help that you can't give it anymore? There's only so much of you to give around. Uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's interesting. Like, you, you can't help everybody. You know, you yeah. can't, I, I can't save the world, right? Like, I've, I've come to terms with that. I'm not going to be the president. I don't want to be the president. Um, but most people have something going on in their life. Like, we may not talk about it, but most people have an area when you really talk about the good stuff, mm -hmm. that we're all going through something. Yeah. Maybe it's not business, maybe it's personal. Maybe somebody in their family is going through some health issues, they're going through some health issues. Um, just stuff, you know, whether it's finances, health, emotional, something. And oftentimes, those are the things that might be most helpful uh, to say, hey, me too. Like, I've been through some stuff too. And rather than just, hey, let me help you with business. Let, let me solve whatever business problems you have. As much as, like, here's, here's some things I've learned along the way of life about life. You know, and I think one of them, um, my, uh, my mom passed away seven years ago from an accidental overdose on aspirin. 
So she was here uh, one day and at 8.58 not there the next day. I didn't know that was possible. It, uh, Mom was a tiny lady um, and I, I, what I think happened was uh, she weighed like 90 pounds, had a headache, took some aspirin, got confused, took some more aspirin, and now and that was it. Mom's mom's visitation four days later was seven hours long. And people just kept showing up of like, here's here's who your mom was, and here's what your mom did for me. I'm like, and in a small town, I was like, who are you people? Like, mom never once talked about you, and for seven hours it's just this line that keeps showing up. And I and I thought about like that in a perspective of legacy and a life well lived. That this thought of like, you know, that's gonna happen to us. Like parents pass away, people, friends, family, they pass away. And what it's allowed me to do is to connect with other people going through stuff. And I remember um, during this time that a uh, friend of mine, and I, I knew him in the industry, but not very well. His son had just been killed in a car accident. He reaches out to me because he knows I'm hurting, that I lost my mom. And he gives me a book and says, this has really helped me out. I, I'm not sure what triggered that for him, other than he was an amazing man and was looking to help out someone else. And by doing that, it really allowed me to grieve and to put the thought of, there wasn't anything in it for him. Mm -hmm. Right, he was yeah. trying to help me, and then how that helped me was more than anything else he could have done. And so, it's just that thought of like, what else can I do? Like, people are going through stuff, like, like, let's talk about those things. Like, business is great, we can talk about business for everyone, but there's also real stuff going on that it's like, really, until I, mean, I think Simon Sinek talks a lot with it, it start with why. You know, yeah, that's why I'm going to circle. That's great. I'm like, start with who? Like, who are you? Like, what are you going through? Like, let's talk about that because the why isn't really, you know, if I'm selling, you know, pencils and paper, and you're like, I don't need any pencils and paper. I'm like, okay, well, are you sure? I thought I'll call you tomorrow. Like, maybe, maybe you need some tomorrow. So it's just like, what do we talk about? Like, what's going on in your world? Well, this is what's going on. You don't need any of my pens and paper. Like, you need, you need this. Like, here's the issue. We can talk about pens and paper whenever you want. Um, I think that goes a lot farther than me just going around telling everybody, yeah. like, I'm great. Like, I'm going to shout louder than anybody else. I'm great. And you should believe me because I'm the loudest shouter. To, like, let me just ask, like, what are you going through? Head off is that here's just maybe just an encouragement, yeah, or say you're not alone, or uh, every now and then just reach out to you, like, hey, Mike, why don't you want to reach out to me? Thanks. And what, what, when does that happen? Yeah, so how how does that affect your view of networking? How do you look at networking? <laughs> uh, I, I used to do a lot of networking. I used to go to a lot of events and you know, have 15 or 20 coffees a week with people. Just, it was exhausting. Mm -hmm. you're, you're meeting with people and so the question is, how long is a coffee? An hour. An hour. Really? Like, I don't know why, that's a magical, <laughs> they, they start on the hour and they end on the hour. And I think of how many hour long coffees I had with people just to connect, just to get to know them. And what if it had been better, like, I'll just send you my bio, you send me your bio, we'll read it, and then let's talk on the phone. Let's talk on the phone for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, like about the good stuff. Because of the amount of time I spent driving, waiting in the coffee shops, going to the wrong coffee shop, you know, the other person being late, me being late, like all of that, waiting in line for the coffee, there's a coffee grinder going on, kind of stuff, like, Nice, but what are we really trying to accomplish? Yeah, and so through all of this, 
was trying to have a framework of if you reach out to me like, hey Mitch, I love the connection with you. Like, that's great. Me too. What do you want to talk about? And not just I want to get to know you better. I have enough friends. Like, I'm not. I'm not in business to make more friends. And I think that's what a lot of networking end up being. Of well, maybe if they like me enough, they'll do business with me. Or I'm just going to go meet more people. The more hands I shake, somebody's going to say yes. And with, and it's not very deliberate about uh, what organization I'm involved in, where I'm going with my time. And uh, so I, most networking to me is a social get-together. And I think of, if you had to go home and tell your wife, your spouse, Kids, here's the conversation I had while I was networking. While I was out tonight at an event and everybody else was home, I was working. Here's what we talked about. They're like, we get to see our kids' report cards. Here's how they did in school. Like, if they saw our report cards for business and for networking, what would they say? Oh, you went to you, you drove 45 minutes to go to that event for people you didn't know in hopes that you might meet somebody? Like, that doesn't seem very strategic. So how do you be more strategic? What do you actually do that's different? Uh, well, well I, I try to minimize the, the initial getting together for coffee. Mm -hmm. Like because you can spend all of your time meeting great people for coffee. You're driving, you know, all, all of that stuff we just talked about. I'd rather say, Mike, what are three things you want to accomplish with our time together? Like, let's get it out there. And my time is valuable, your time is valuable. Given the choice between working and being with my family, you know, I choose this. Like, I want to be very effective and with my time. So if I ask that question, what are three things you want to accomplish with our Time together, that's going to give us a focus. It's also going to make you, the other person, be a little bit more deliberate about what are we trying to accomplish. So, so I like getting together. How do you know when it's the right time to get together? Like they come back with three items, right? And how do you know it's not the right fit for you? Well, it depends on you know. If their three items are like, well, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about myself. I'd like to learn a little bit more about you, and we'd like to see if there's anything that we can do, you know, together. Man, you didn't do any homework. Like it, that's not the effort that I'm hoping for. Um, but I, I think what, a couple different strategies. One is uh, I try to line them up like all day. If, I, if I'm going to go have coffee, if I, if I'm going to be networking. I want to do as much as I can in a single day or a single week. How much that we say like Tuesday, I'm going here for coffee. Uh, Thursday morning, I'm going to be over here for coffee, and it's just very scattered versus like whether on the phone or via Zoom or at an actual coffee shop. So, like, you want to meet for coffee? I'm going to be at this coffee shop on this date. Here's my schedule. Which one fits? Like, how bad do you want to meet? Because if you just want to try to fit it in the schedule, it's like, shh, I want, I want the other person to as well show me that it's valuable for them. Sure. So can I kind of block off certain times that here's where we're, where I'm available? Um, and then also ahead of time, what's the agenda? So I can prepare so that I can really give value to you and you can do the same rather than that initial getting to know each other. What happens if they give you the agenda and it is something specific, but it's not something you're interested in? Yeah, I think it goes back to like, I'm not trying to be everybody's friend. Like, yeah. I, I, as much as I love people and their stories, is it maybe one of the things that I can help them with is I'm not the guy. You know, who you should meet is this person. Like, I'm just, or maybe we can just have this conversation on the phone. We can talk about it a little bit, and maybe I can help get you in the right direction. But uh, there's also ones where you're just like, Oh, boy, that's that's just I don't I don't want to talk about that. That's not of interest. I'm not a good prospect. Whatever it may be, 
Uh, I found that the more specific I can be with, I can meet at this time and this date. I also try to shorten those meetings to 30 minutes. Oh, I understand. But does that work or do people feel insulted that you leave? You know, you know what? Just I, as long as I know ahead of time, as long as I let them know, let's sure. just talk between 10 and 10 30. There, there used to be a, a book um, on selling that talked about like the first eight minutes you should build rapport. And I'm like, when I go to the doctor, we don't build rapport by like, hey Mike, like you like sports? You're like, yeah, I like sports. Me too. Hey Mike, you, you ever been to Disney World? And you're like, well, yeah. I'm like, me too. Like, and find this report, and go to the doctor, and you know how the doctor built the report? They're great at what they do. They're professional, they ask great questions, and you're like, this person knows their stuff. Yeah, I trust them. Yeah. Here's everything you want to know about them. Where in business, you're like, well, let's just find some commonality. Like, what if we just cut out some of that stuff? Mm -hmm. And so, so a couple of things. Here's my availability. And trying to, like, here's maybe Thursday and Friday, the second Thursday and Friday of the month, I'm available to call. And I'm just going to put it out there on Twitter, Instagram, whatever, right? Like, here's my sign up sheet, first come, first serve. And if you're not available in those two, this Thursday and Friday in February, <laughs> I'm available to call. Yeah. Like, it's not my responsibility or my obligation to go around and fit into everybody else's sales. Yeah. Like, I want to help, but I also know that like, I don't think I should watch that. How do you go about finding the people that you want to connect with? Yes. So I think there's a, we talk a lot about just in general, just like demographics, right? Just like, here's the ideal person. What what I don't think we talk about nearly enough is the psychographics. Like what the values are for mm -hmm. those people. Like who who would really resonate with this? If you want somebody in a three-piece suit, that's not where I'm at in life. Like you want somebody who's gonna show up with some tattoos, like in a quick shade today, like this is this is the best I got today. If you're okay with that, well good. So if you're trying to, for me, I really dig into psychographics and the, the values, what's important to them, what's what resonates with them. And that, you find those great people, that's who I want to work with, rather than, well, they, they meet these demographics. This is the right, they have the right checkbook size. Mm -hmm. I want, to, I want to build with who they are as people first. Going back to that start with who. Yeah. Trying to show with great people, life and business is a whole lot better. Oh my God. Uh, so, so, so true. <laughs> and, and I think even like, I've never once asked any doctor I've had, any dentist I've been to, any attorney, like, hey, what was your GPA? Right? Like, they're smarter than me. Like, I just assume they're smart. Like, they know their stuff. And, like, but the doctors that I love are the ones that the, there is a balance to it. And you can tell that they're great at what they do professionally. They're the technical experts. But we, we mesh as people as well. And we don't talk nearly enough about that aspect of so So, here in creating a better way for people to, like, people are either going to love that. They're like, Mike, I'm the in. Or they're like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Like, why, why would you want to do that? Like, this, and it's a good filter. Yeah. Like, I'll take the person who loves that mission. Like, we'll find a place for you on the team. Yeah. We'll make a place for you on the team. Yeah. Rather than, like, the technical expert. Like, you're great, but you don't fit. Um, so I try to spend a lot of time on cool. Who are those great people? And those great um, individuals are gonna, I think, resonate with my story. 
how do you connect with them? Or, or the, as they, yeah, they don't really respond. They, you know, that it's the, the the hardest part in business, right? Like how do you get new customers, clients? Yeah. Like, because we get bombarded with marketing, email, pitches, copies, uh, phone calls, text messages, whatever it is, right? Sales. Um, so how do we be different? And for me, how to be different is not by going to more events, having more coffee. Is is I've identified. So the, the best way for me, uh, about ten years ago, when uh, there was a lot of new stadiums being built around here, I found that. Um, this revelation of when there's a party or there's a networking event, everybody thanks the host. Like, go to a party, you know, at the end of the party, as you're leaving, you're like, hey, Mike, this was great. Thank you so much for inviting me. You had a great time. And I'm like, not a rocket science, like, not the smartest guy in the world. I'm like, I want to be the host. Rather than go around to everybody else in I want to be the host for that event. And I found that uh, as there were new stadiums going up or you know, the, the capital or the different things, I started doing tours. I would organize a tour of the same capital. And to say, you know, Tuesday at 4 30, we're going to do a tour of state capital. You know, I've been in state capital since I was in fourth grade. And you go. And as we were going on a tour, we could walk and talk as people. Not as, hey Mike, what do you do? Here's what I do. You're walking and exploring the capital. Hmm. Or the baseball stadium or the football stadium. Or you, you get to know people on a, on a more personal level and you get to judge who they are as a person and uh, how they, how they um, maybe, maybe they hold the door open for everybody. Allow everybody else to go through as you go on the tour. Right? You, you can pick up on a lot of things on the tour. And then at the end we go, have you know appetizers or whatever and talk some more maybe talk to them. And during those tours, people started inviting other people. Like, hey, hey we're gonna go to the capital and you're like, don't need the referrals. Yeah, yeah, they're they're like, like, hey, that sounds awesome. Can I bring my this person? I'm like, yes. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> like, and so we started doing this, like, well, what if we did something like this once a month? And because people started inviting other people, and that's how I met a lot of great people in the Twin Cities was by doing those tours, just being my host. That's kind of transformed over time to um, doing lunches. Uh, if I get six or eight or ten great people together for a lunch, and there's no presentation, there's not like, here's my business card, or everybody go around the table and you know, talk two minutes about yourself, just what if we get great people together and just talk? Yeah. And people are all there's a question like, what do you guys talk about? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Stop. Like whatever's going on in people's minds as business owners, you know, it's lonely at the top. Mm -hmm. And so if you get around other people going through stuff, whether you're talking about daycare, whether you're talking about revenue growth, whether you're talking about uh, you know, the difference between a nanny and an old care. One of the most fascinating conversations that I've had. Along the What's an au pair? It's it's a. I don't have either one. <laughs> the people at the table were very, um, very opinionated about which is better and why, and it's just fascinating conversation that they had at lunch. Hmm. People at the end of the you know the lunch are like, this was awesome. Like, can I come back? I'm like, yes, <laughs> yes, you can come back. And so just try to connect great people together. And it's kind of vetted as uh, who's going to be there. It's not necessarily like, here how big your pocketbook is, or here's how big your company is, as much as are you a great person. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. you know, the thought was, well, I was doing on once a quarter, like, such a great idea. Maybe I should do it once a month. <laughs> right. And then, like, if I'm hosting the event, the tour or the lunch or whatever it may be, I don't have to go to a event. I don't have to go around and pretend I'm shaking hands. I can get a control and have more influence on who I'm going to be. Yeah, so that, that's been my big, um, how do 
how do I work less? How do I, I be a lot more effective with my time? And then with that, how do I give? Like I give these eight people on the table and they just talk. I'm not giving them things. Like they're gonna hit it off and add value to each other. Yeah. And then at the end of like thanks, man, this was great. I'm like, all I did was get you together for fun. Like, I, I didn't do any work. Yeah. Like, everybody there did the work. But I think that's part of like building that mountain of generosity of how do I get great people together with no agenda other than great people getting together and having great conversations, great things are going to come from it. That's the agenda. Let's have a great conversation. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, that's that's all I know. Like, that's, you know, the, the more, going back to like, the more I can become of me, the more that I can help, the better my life is. The better my relationships are, the happier I become helping out other people. Less stress there is in going around trying to sell self yeah. right? Like just, just do it. Yeah. Well, I love that we're getting close to the end of our time. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to post them. But I had kind of a, a sidebar question, which is uh, how did you learn to balance work and family? Or yeah. how is that been for you? It's hard, right? I, I think uh, I think there's this notion of and actually the first tattoo I got was the congruent symbol. So I have a tattoo on my forearm. And for those of you at home, like uh, high school geometry, congruence is a statement of agreement. And I think there's this work-life balance thought. Like in work and life uh, in a balance, it means that something's always pulling. And I, I like congruence where like everything is going in the same direction. So how do we fit everything headed to that goal? Um, makes a lot more sense than balancing things out. Balancing things out means feels like something's always out of whack. And so really getting into my own like hundred year manifesto, my own purpose of like, why am I here? What's important in the next one hundred years? Let's talk about that because I I can set up a framework for who I am. Decisions about networking, decisions about business, and decisions about family make a whole lot more sense if I have that clarity on my purpose and my mission and my own life. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. Do you have anything else you wanted to share before? You know, I'm, I'm honored, Mike, like you call me your mentor, and I, I giggle every time you do it because it's just me, right? Like, just that Popeye, like, I'm, I'm not a mentor, I'm just like, sharing and helping other people go through life and maybe not make some of the same mistakes I made in doing business and doing life. And uh, so I'm, I'm always honored when you call me that. It always makes me giggle that it's like I'm, a, I'm in my grade school <laughs> like you know, <laughs> mentor. <laughs> but uh, I appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate you. I, I love, I think, uh, when we first talked uh, last year, I love what you're doing, why you're doing it, and it's, uh, it's an honor to be part of it in, uh, in, in a small, small part of it. So. Awesome. Well, thank you, Nick, so much for joining us. And thank you to all those who have watched with us as well. Uh, we appreciate that.